Hello guys, welcome along. It's uh, Nigel here from Nigel's Land Rover channel and I'm going to do a review for you today of a, not a real Land Rover, but it's a tenth scale Land Rover, so it's a tenth of the size of a real one. And this is basically a Tamiya radio control kit. Now, if you are an RC fan and you know all about Tamiya and radio control models and stuff, this review may not be for you because I'm going to direct this review at somebody who's probably never even heard of these things. Um, so if you haven't heard of these things and you're a Land Rover enthusiast who perhaps is is looking for a, a good present to buy for someone or something to treat yourself with, then stick around because um, I think you're going to like what you see. If you are a, a radio control enthusiast and you love radio control models, stick around. You might like what you see, but um, I will be doing the, the sort of basics. OK, so what we've got here is a Tamiya. Uh, radio control model with um it's got the cco one chassis so it's got a live rear axle but independent front so it's not strictly true to scale for a land rover defender but you know this is um this is a lot cheaper this is less than half the price of like your traxas or your rc galand which do actually have live axles um so it's a ready to assemble electric radio model kit it's got effective suspension system featuring coil sprung dampers Highly realistic body shell plus wheels and tyres included. Enjoy the thrill of constructing and driving your own model. And that's the big thing. You get to build this from the base up. You know, it's basically, there's nothing assembled. You assemble everything, all the gearboxes, everything. And then you get to, to, to drive it. You, you paint it and everything. And there's nothing that's particularly difficult about this. So um, anybody that could sort of, I don't know, if you if you could attempt a small repair job on your Land Rover, there is no reason why you couldn't build this. Um, there's a minimum number of tools required which we'll go through and there's a few little extras and bits and pieces you need to buy to be able to use it. If you just want to build it and stick it on the shelf to look at, you don't need to buy anything more. So um, let's have a look around the box. This here is quite important as well. I, I'm, I'm going to go over this um, when we get the box open. But basically, if you look for this sticker, OK, Ford Reverse Electronic Speed Control, that's what ESC is, um, plus LED parts included. Now, the world's markets alter. This sticker is actually added on. It's a, it's a, it's a stuck on sticker. Um, the world's markets are different wherever you go, and you have to be very, very careful what you're buying. For example, if you buy one in the UK, I believe you don't get the LED, but you do get the electronic speed control. Some parts, you, if, you, if you look, you'll, you'll see some on eBay that may look cheap. Actually read the description because it will tell you that none of this is included. And if you want to go and buy the electronic speed control, I think it's about £15. I don't know how much the LED parts are, but they're Tamiya, so they're not going to be cheap. So it's best to look for, if you want to have working lights, look for the one with LED lights, with LED parts included. Um, and bear in mind, if you get one without the speed control, it's an extra lot of money you're going to spend. I got this one on Amazon. Um, it was £171, which is an absolute bargain considering it's got all this in. Because I think that's less than the UK retail and you don't get any of that. I don't, I'm not sure if you get the speed controller or not. So, um, something to bear in mind. And I've just looked on eBay and you can see they're up to like 250 quid, But some of those actually come with all the RC gear you need. So it's a complete package. So, you know, it's worth looking at and, and working it all out. So going over here on the side of the box, we can see that this is the chassis from underneath. It's still got the cellophane on. I haven't opened it yet. So this is giving you an image of the chassis with the battery attached. You can see the live rear axle and it's got a four link rear end, very much like the um, very much like the Defender, other than the the uh, triangle on the top is the other way around. Uh, you've got a big bash plate on here and a big bumper uh, uprights on the front. And as I say, the front is independent. So it's telling us some stuff about there. Front and rear differentials in sealed gear gearboxes enable smooth cornering and for even greater off-road performance on rough terrain, the real differential may be locked during assembly. So you, while you're building it, you can lock it. That's something I didn't even know. So it's ready to assemble, blah, 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 equipped with bath type tub frame, double wishbone suspension in the front, four links rigid suspension in the rear, semi-pneumatic all-terrain tires, four performance oil dampers. So it's actually got oil damp shocks. Features shaft driven full time four wheel drive can be assembled with locked rear diff. So we go around the end of the box here. I'm not sure if the camera's going to focus on that, and there we go. Okay. And then we've got the other side of the box. I'm looking for a kit number and I can't see one on here. Um, so this is basically an image of the built up model. As you can see, it does look lovely. 
Um, it's actually a, um, a Lexan polycarbonate body, so you actually paint the inside, so you're always guaranteed a nice glossy finish, uh, and you use the proper polycarbonate paints that, that Tamiya and a couple of other manufacturers make. You can't use your ordinary acrylics and stuff, they'll just flake off. Um, so it's telling you it's an RC model, it's going to be 457 millimeters long, 200 millimeters wide, and 214 millimeters high. Um, so it's saying here, uh, front and rear light cases are compatible with separately sold LEDs. Well, it's telling me in here that the LEDs are included. Dynamic off and on-road driving awaits the CCO1 chassis. Metal plated wheels are paired with block pattern tires. This is some upgrades you can get. Now you can buy these bearings, you can look on eBay and get bearing kits for certain. You, what you'd look for is a bearing kit for that chassis and it will be very, very cheap. The bearings will be the same. You don't need to buy the expensive Tamiya, what they call tune-up parts or hop-up parts. And then you've got some metal drive shaft gears here, which if you are going to give this a hard time off-road, might be worth going for that. And then we've got some um, much improved shock absorbers there. And they're aluminium rather than the plastic bodies that you're going to get in the kit. So, you know, perhaps worth uh, thinking about. So what you're going to need to make this work is a two channel transmitter. Now, if you buy a two channel transmitter, eBay, Amazon, whatever, about 25 quid for the cheaper end. Um, and that will be the transmitter and the receiver will be in one box. OK, so you'll get that and that. The electronic speed controller, the ESC, is already included in the kit. So you don't need that. You will need a servo. OK, and you will need a battery servo. If you get cheap, you can get them for like a fiver. You can go up to like 25 pounds, I think. And the batteries are about 15 pounds. So you're also going to need to get some batteries for your transmitter, which are whatever it takes. They're going to be probably double A's and you're probably going to need six of them. So there we go. Um, and you will also need a charger for your battery as well. But they're, they're only a few quid. So all of this has got really, really cheap over the years. I mean, years ago, all this would have cost you well over a hundred pounds. And these days you get it for just a few quid. So there we go. And on the back of the box, we can see here that we've got Carson and it's in German. So Carson, I believe, is a German company that work a lot alongside Tamiya. And it's stuck on the outside of the box. So I can only assume this is a German market model sold by Amazon and they're recommending their own stuff. So you've got the Carson transmitter, you've got the Carson servo, the Carson battery, the Carson charger and the um, Mignon set, which is a set of batteries. So maybe it only takes four batteries. So we shall see. Also, when you're looking for radio gear, you don't want to be using the old fashioned um, stuff with crystals and that. You want to be looking for the 2.4 gig uh, radio gear. The old fashioned stuff with the crystals and stuff gets all sorts of interference from other users. From Like the blue chip is the same as ambulances use, I believe. So um, you want to be careful that you will lose your model or smash it up or whatever. So I'm going to get this cellophane off this box. We'll get the box open and we'll see what comes inside. OK, so as we can see, the box is absolutely crammed. And here we've got, this is the roof of our Defender. And this is some, some plastic sprues and stuff. And as you can see, the box is absolutely full to the brim. So I won't open any bags initially. We'll just go through and have a look and see what you get. So you can see what you're getting yourself into if you want to get one of these. And as I say, there is nothing in here that's going to be, you know, too difficult for the average guy to do. So the first bag we've got here is a sprue. You can see this ordinary, um, this is ABS. So we've got a grill, spare wheel cover. These are our headlight pods. And these are the parts for our, um, for our uh, for the um, front lights, I imagine, I imagine, where you can put the uh, drill them out, I guess. Not sure. We'll see when we look at the instructions. And then we've got our parts of our roll cage here. And then here's the external roll cage that's going to go around the around the windscreen. Big bag here, which has got various bits and pieces in. We'll get that open in a minute. You can see we've got damper oil. We've got our motor there. We've got some grease, some metal shafts, big universal joint, another big universal joint here. So you can see that it's um, it's a pretty technical, pretty technical little kit. And we've got the actual body shell itself. Now this is the time where you take this out and it never goes back in. So, so this is the actual under of a body shell. Um, we'll look at that in more detail in a minute because I can't get it in on the camera. So we've got wheels and tires in here. More plastic sprues. Let's look at the differential housing in there. Some other bits and pieces. 
and then we've got the main actual floor itself the floor chassis and then underneath the box got another cardboard sleeve which is like a shelf so we've got here we go we've got our Tamiya LED light unit so we've that's probably in here and yes there it is so we've got LEDs in here and we've got our light unit as well so as it said on the box it's included on the side of the box said it's an optional extra so you've got that there health and safety notes electronic speed controller and this can also run a brushless motor so if you ever wanted to up the performance and make it um, faster you could more bits and pieces you've got some um, what's that light guards there more bits and pieces there and then we've got our front bumper looks like we get two front bumpers which is pretty cool um, not the right shape it's bent in on the ends so that's, that's a bit strange but uh, there we've got all that there clear tube for your aerial which in the old days if you're into rolls if, if, if you remember your RC cars when you were younger they used to have this great big long lead out the back you don't have that these days you have a tiny little aerial for the 2.4 gig we get an instruction manual which in typical Tamiya style is going to be pretty amazing and then we get a massive sheet of stickers um, decals decals whatever you want to call them and these are going to be for the wheel arches so you'll have some fun getting those to go around but um yeah all in all very very nice indeed so we'll put these back in the box we can see we've got the old defender stickers there for like the old um was the 90s wasn't it? i think they had these and then we've got some stickers here for the guards the, the grills on top the wings we've got window surrounds there's window surrounds for the rear end door handles um indicators and rear lights there and then we've got our side lights there we've got the re um, fog lamp reversing lamp um rear rear cross member here uh, that's for the uh, windows in the roof and then twin land or something <laughs> I don't know. i'm surprised there's no uh, one life live it stickers we got a, that's what i was looking for the county defender stickers that's what i was thinking of and then the uh, the mesh there for the side for the air intake for the heater or the um or the uh, not the heater the air intake for the engine there we go if you look on ebay there are lots and lots of bits and pieces you can get for this so you can like get snorkels and all sorts of stuff that you can add to it so let's get the box out of the way and have a look what we get inside so i'm going to turn the camera off bring it in closer and then we can look more, in more detail at what we've got okay so we'll start go by, by going through the manual just so that you can see exactly what it is you're getting yourself into and if you look at this and think oh my god that looks like too much work you can switch off <laughs> so um Basically it's like an A4 size manual, opens out, double the size, and it starts off by telling us we've got some health and safety stuff in here. Um, and even though this is actually German market, you can see the first language is Japanese, the second language is English. So you're always going to find English in here, it's not, not a problem there. Um, so it's telling us the additional items we need to get, giving us our um, suitable servo size. When you are buying servos, if you are completely new to this, there are there are some bigger servos available and there are some smaller servos. This is like, the, I'm not sure what they're called, but this is like a standard size servo. The mini servos won't be any good because you won't be able to fit them in and they probably won't be strong enough for the steering. And then you've also got bigger servos which are mega strong for massive aircraft and stuff. They won't physically fit. So you need to make sure you get the right size. And you can see you've got a hell of a tolerance, 12 to 16 mil height from the mounting to the end of the spline and 45 to 50 mil between the screw holes so you know you, you don't worry they're out there there's there's thousands of them um and as i say you need to get your um your, your transmitter you can get the wheel type or you can get the old-fashioned i call it old-fashioned it's the, it's the standard stick type and then somebody came along with this wheel type this seems to be the preferred option for cars so we've um, got some health and safety precautions here about you know not heating the motor up, um, not using it to you know let it all get cool. Don't use it with with multiple other models around. This is what I was saying about interference. So um, recharge correctly and, and doing bits and pieces. And then there's some symbols here about um, sitting down and making sure you take your time and build it properly. This is how to set up all your radio gear. 
and we've got down here the tools required I said I'd mention this um, there's some paints you can get so you can see here all the PS is the polycarbonate paints so they're suggesting white for the roof the racing green for the body and then smoke for the windows um, and then you've got your TS and your X numbers they are the standard acrylic Tamiya plastic model paints like for example X11 it says X11 that one's X11 that's a little Tamiya pot of X11 so um, so there you go and then they're suggesting a, a brush on racing green uh, sorry an aerosol racing green an aerosol semi-gloss black and an X6 orange so you can get all those paints in your local model shop or from Amazon or whatever then they're suggesting um, a large and a small screwdriver a pair of tweezers a modeling knife side cutters and long nose pliers when they say side cutters they don't mean side cutters like your big electrical things these are little Tamiya side cutters or you can get your cheaper versions like this these are only a couple of pound you can see I've ruined these I use these for cutting metal rod and stuff but these are about 15 to 25 pounds um, but you can just get the cheap ones like this and you can see they've got a very um, sharp edge on them side cutters tend to have a beveled edge so you can't get in close so um, you're better off with the, the proper sort of modeling cutters and then scissors uh, CA cement for the rubber tires which is super glue and then they're suggesting a file soft cloth, cloth and caliper will assist in construction okay so digital caliper something like this so you can measure stuff so if you need, if you need a 50 mil long screw you can measure a 50 mil long screw um, soft cloth obviously tissue paper or t-shirt material whatever a file you can use sanding sticks like like I've got here this is um this is an infinity sanding stick and that's for cleaning off your nibs off your plastic parts and stuff I will probably do an online build of this for you so you'll see exactly what we're doing now going over the page we're starting straight in here now, I'm going to show you all this in a minute the parts are bagged up so bag A will do one to six it's very much like Lego so they're telling you here that bag A will give you all the parts you need for step one to six and here they're showing you the screws and parts you need and one of the beauties about Tamiya these things are always real life size if you measure this if you measure this in real life this will be there you go, six millimeters long and it's three millimeters diameter on the paper so what you see here is the actual life size and sometimes you will see stuff which is dark here we go so that's showing you that one there's dark you can see this one's just just a, an outline and this one is shaded in that means that one's black okay so you've got all these parts here all down the side showing you all exactly what you need telling you exactly what you need where you need to put it the grease and everything um, you've got a spacer here as I say I'll probably do an online I will do an online build of this so you can see how it goes together so if you're unsure then I can show you um, so you've got your differential gear going in here spider um, and then you've got the actual main drive between the front and the rear end going in here this is called a spur gear then we're going to add all this into the floor drop in the motor and add the gearbox cover on top so this is our main drive now so the motor is going to drive this this is going to drive the rear shaft this is going to drive the front diff so then we've got this gear here which is going to be driving the front differential and we're going to be adding some shafts in a minute I can see some um, we're adding some um, ball joints there to shafts and stuff so this is here for steering no doubt then adding more and more parts into the bottom we're adding a, a drive shaft to go to the rear end and then we've got some rear that's shock bank sorry it's going to be not steering and that's going to be pivots for the um for the trailing arms so this is all balls these are metal balls so all um all going to be fairly strong and then you've got these nylon plastic type cups going on the end of these screw on rods for your steering and this is all going to be these are all very very tight fits and all very strong you've got a metal rod attaching the two um shafts here going in and this is our front wishbones now we're putting together and they're highlighting this little little uh, raised area here which you um you actually make sure they match up when you screw them together then we're adding our front body mount to the top of the chassis and we're adding our upper arms for the um for the front suspension and adding in the steering arms there and then we're going to drop in 
the front um, this is the bash plate the wishbones and the uprights and we're adding in the drive shafts as well or the drive couplings for the drive shafts to go into and then we're going to add our drive shafts into our outer sort of um, constant velocity joint as it were uh, on the end of the shaft going into the upright there and then we're going to add that in okay then we're going to work on the rear differential got the rear diff here with the spider in the middle just like the real thing with planet and the sun gears and then we've got our drive shafts here for the rear axle going in and this is going to be our input pinion i'm guessing yeah, so the rear end is a proper crown wheel and pinion rather than being driven like a like a front wheel drive gearbox is. This is going to be a proper crown wheel and pinion. So you're you're putting the axle halves together and you're incorporating the crown wheel and the pinion there, and then there's your half shafts going in either side. Adding in the trailing arms, and as you can see, they're on ball mounts, so they'll be um, very very flexible. Universal joint for the rear prop shaft, and then this is the rear body mount we're making up now. You need to make sure you get these through the right holes. You've got different holes here for putting everything through. And then going over here, we're adding in the rear suspension. We've got our uh, four link there going in. And then we're going to build up our shock absorbers. And it's telling us here how to fill them up with oil. Make sure you don't get any bubbles. And then we're going to add the cap on and make sure we've got some rag around tissue paper, whatever, to catch any spills. So we've got a seal going in there adding the springs onto the dampers and then you've got some um, they're going to be selectable spacers so you can you can increase the spring stiffness but I believe there's also going to be spacers so you can make the ride height different so you can give it a two inch lift or whatever an intense scale remember that's only going to be five millimeters so there you go there's your spring and dampers going into the rear end there now we get to this stage in the build we need to set the servo up now obviously when the servo comes the servo this is looking on top of the servo and it does this kind of thing so you need to make sure it's centered so that when the car is in neutral the the control the the steering wheel isn't being turned or the the lever on the rc isn't being moved the steering stays central so you need to connect up everything here with all your batteries you charge the battery here batteries in your transmitter connect up your servo and make sure you set the servo up as they're shown here when the servo is in neutral okay and also you need to make sure you use the right screw and the right fitting for um, the different manufacturers of servo. Be very, very careful. If you go and put the wrong screw in there, you can actually ruin the servo. So it's best to work from the smallest one and work up. And here they're explaining how to select the screw that you need. Okay. Steering arms, making up the steering arms to the correct length. And then we're going to bolt the servo in and add the, uh, add the arm there to our horn and that's going to give us our steering mechanism. Now we're going to put in our electronic speed controller and receiver. That's going in there and it's showing you here directly how to connect it up and we've got an on off switch going in the bottom. Adding our wheels and tires before you super glue them best to see whether you need to bother or not because sometimes the tires are very tight fit on the rims and they don't actually need to be super glued. Uh, especially if you're doing just playing around in the garden or something you'd probably be fine uh, and then you've got these bushes going in here i would recommend the, if there is one upgrade i would do with this is the upgrading the bearings uh, the plastic bushes are fine um, but if you get any water or grit or anything in there they soon wear out and the trouble is then you will wear the metal parts and then you'll need to if you want to upgrade your bearings you've worn the shaft out as well so you know it's best to um, put the bearings in from day one i think so um, then we're going to add the wheels. We've got a simple flange and that's here and there's a, like a box spanner you get in, you, you'll get in the kit. And then we're going to tidy up all our wiring, add the battery and that's the time to go and test it. Body, um, what you need to do with the body is trim it. So basically what we're going to do here is go around the edge and you're going to drill some holes. Be very careful, don't go straight in with a five and a half mil drill. You drill them smaller first and then just open them up gently. Or even if you can, if you've got like a little burring tool. Um, so here's something here. Great, just come straight to it. This is like a little um, dental burr tool. This is three mil diameter. It's better for cutting this polycarbonate rather than going in the drill. Um, you'll probably know what I mean when I say that a drill tends to sort of rip out two, two great sections. So be a bit steady with that. Um, trimming the body, you can either go round and score it with a knife or you can... Um, 
or you can cut it out with scissors. Now quite often with the Tamiya kits, they pre-cut the arches for you, but on this one they haven't. So you're going to go around here and just score it, score around here, and then just snap it off. Again, as I say, I'll do a build of this so you can see exactly how it's done. Um, and this here, we've got a rear brace A, I'm not sure what that is going to be. And then we've got another brace here. Um, looks like I was talking about those bumpers earlier when we get in the kit. We don't use them by the look of it. And now we've got our the body, painting the body. Now it's only us to wash it out here with soap and water. And then we're going to add masks. You've got mask numbers A to J or whatever. A to M, sorry. And you're going to add the masking stickers inside and then paint the body. Now obviously when it comes to painting the roof, you're going to have to mask up all your windows and then mask the whole body, paint the roof, okay, and then take out the masking for the whole body and paint the green. So they're telling you here what to do, okay. So mask off areas to be painted white using masking tape and then paint the white and then remove the masking tape and paint the racing green. Now remember if you do this wash the body again because you will get residue from the masking tape on the body. So what you could do here is just wash the roof out, mask up everything, mask up these windows, paint the roof. When that's all dry take all your masking out, mask off the roof, well you don't need to mask off the roof but leave those window masks on and then paint your green after you've washed it out and masked off the windows. Okay. It's just, it takes some thought, you just need to think about it sort of in reverse because you're painting everything inside out. And then looking over here, we're going to start adding our stickers. So we've got our wheel arches going on here, front bumper, um, vents on the on the top of the wings, um, stickers for the uh, for the windscreen wipers and the window surrounds, um, the window surrounds up here, door handles, stickers there. And then we've got an external roll cage to go on which is held in with screws. We've got our mirrors going on here, which are held in with a, um, a rubber O-ring and, and a snap clip, which will make them a bit flexible if they get knocked. Now we're going to come on to our tail light. So this is the Tamiya um, light unit. So we're going to make up these tail light parts here and add them, add them into the body here. I'm guessing we'll have to cut the holes in the body to see the lights through. or we just have the light showing through the clear body. We've got masking here, so I'm guessing that the, the actual light shines through the, the clear body. Um, doing the same on the front here, adding in our headlights, side lights, everything in there. Uh, they're, doo -doo -doo, they're telling us to paint these. So I'm guessing that you don't get LED lights for the front side lights or indicators. It's only for the, the headlights. look at that in more detail when we come to it and then going through here we got our bits and pieces of our roll cage going on adding the rear and in the rear um, spare wheel and then putting the body on and it's showing you to get the the body at the right height to make sure it's not um contacting the wheels or anything and then going over the page here's the finished chassis this is how you practice with it and this is all your problems okay your, your fault finding guide and then here is the um this is your, your sprue layout, so this are all your parts that you've got in here. And you can see here the darker areas are not used. As I said, that front bumper is not going to be used. And we've got all our gears and bits and pieces. You can see we've got the grease box spanner. We've got a couple of Allen keys in there. All our shafts, and then there's more metal parts down here. More clips and screws and springs and nuts and bolts and whatever. And there we go. So there it is. Feel like you want to have a go at this? Let's have a look at what you get in the kit. Okay, so if we look at the parts in the reverse order they came out of the box in. So everything comes bagged up and, and stapled. Be careful to cut your hands on the staples because they're often quite sharp. So where we've got two sprues, I won't get them both out. I'll just show you the one. And you can see this is quite a flexible sprue. And with, with Tammy, you can look on the back and you can see what the material is. And I've said that and it doesn't show on this one. So um, yeah, generally it'll say on the on the back, it'll say ABS or PS or whatever for, for what material it is. So you can see this is a fairly flexible plastic and this is what our trailing arms and our front wishbones are made of and our shock mounts and everything. So you can see that it's all fairly flexible and tough. It's not just gonna shatter as soon as you hit it or drop it onto a rock or something. So um, 
So yeah, I've got the uh, these are the front suspension arms, or these are the rear suspension arms. Um, front uh, wishbones, we've got shock mounts and suspension mounts here. Um, shock absorber parts. These are our clamps for our uh, adjusting our spring preload. So yeah, they're all um, lovely. As I say, the, these kits are they're not like your cheap cheap Chinese radio controlled toys. Um, if you look into the radio control tank world, you'll pay a thousand pounds now for a radio control Tamiya tank. Yet you can get the, the Chinese sort of Heng Long whatever tanks for for less than a hundred pounds, I believe. And they're they're not a patch on the quality of, of the Tamiya. Now this is a harder plastic, so this is um, PC and ABS. So I believe that's polycarbonate and ABS. So this is going to be a very hard, very strong plastic. Um, and it's it's you know it's not um, it's not really that flexible. And as we say, this bumper very very tough, but we're not using them. We get two of them. And here's our body mounts. Um, and this is going to be some other little mountings for bits and pieces and more body mount parts there. So they're sort of harder. They're sort of a harder plastic. Now getting into this big bag here, this is obviously our wheels and tyres and so this bag is sellotaped and this is the bit where you get to, this will never go back in the box the same as it came out, so you have been warned. Okay, so obviously we've got our tyres here, these are going to be a, a fairly hard vinyl tyre. If you are intending to go rock climbing or anything off road, um, you know, the slow stuff, I would suggest replacing these with a softer rubber tire because these are quite hard and they're going to be quite slippery. So um, there's no manufacturer's name or anything on there, so there's nothing there for scale. But uh, yeah, they're quite, they're quite hard and not particularly grippy. So as I say, if you're going to go rock climbing with this, then um, perhaps get some softer tires would be, uh, would be my advice. And we've got another, I won't bother getting this out, this is just another bag of, um, of parts. This is our gearbox cover, motor mount in here. Just so you can see what I'm looking at. Got a motor mount in there, look. And then we've got a gearbox cover, or diff cover. This is our main gearbox cover. Bash plate for the front. Let's go underneath and then there's the, um, the front A bar. And then other, just other mounting parts down in there. Okay, so I won't bother, so I won't bother opening that one up. And then here we've got our axles. You probably want to see this. Let's get that one out of the way. Okay, so we've got this is going to be servo horns, different bits and pieces for our servos. You can see this is a very shiny black plastic, and this is actually polycarbonate, so it's going to be very strong. Um, so yeah, very um, very strong uprights there but remember these are these are attached to sort of more flexible um, um, wishbones that's what I was looking for so that you know the fact they're hard means they will absorb the the, um, the bumps in conjunction with the softer parts they're attached to and then again here we've got there's nothing on there it says polycarbonate there so this is all going to be all fairly hard very strong we've got our rear axle there and then we've got our main motor and cover there going on the inside so um, yeah, the motor is going to sit in here, which is going to drive through a gear there, which is going to drive through a gear there, drive the differential, um, and then that's going to take drive off down to the front wheels then. So, uh, all very nice indeed. Very, very shiny. And then we've also got the wheels themselves, which are basically silver plated. Okay, so they're just a sort of generic wheel. So you may wish to use them, you may want to get some upgrades or whatever. Tell me have a standard fitting with the hex in the back. Okay, so here's some more parts that you'll be interested in. Rear wheel cover there, or spare wheel cover should I say, which is uh, quite nice, got some detail molded into it. Front grille there with the correct shaped upper capping on there, that would be painted green, so we'll need to do some painting on that. Um, we've got the, um, the Land Rover logo bit there, and then we've got this here for our side lights and indicators and we can paint those or use the stickers or whatever and then these are the light pods for our LEDs so um, 
we'll look more into that when we actually come to build it and see how that all works. I'm assuming this is going to be fittings for the LEDs here that pinch them in place. And then more bits and pieces there for lights by the look of it, for the um, indicators. So, uh, very nice indeed. I don't know why they didn't give us anything on the front. Very strange. But the backs are all taken care of by the look of it. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the external roll cage here. This is the one going around the windscreen. You've got these two bits here for the sides. I've got mirrors here and then some little bits and pieces and clips for holding the mirrors in place so um yeah all very nicely molded and that is actually polycarbonate and abs so it's all going to be very strong these models are particularly strong you won't you won't break them you know unless you really really try they're they're very very good quality and the thing is with tammy as well as if you do break anything you can always get the parts um and a lot of it is generic across all the different models as well. You've got the main chassis, which is a, a beautiful piece of injection mold in itself. They've already put the sticker on there for you, the <laughs> health and safety. And this is made of ABS. And I'm looking for a date and I can't see one. But um, basically this is a very strong, very hard chassis. So you've got the, you sort of, you've got a kind of ladder chassis molded in there. Um, and then you can see you've got your opening here for the rear axle and then you've got your front differential going in there which is going to get driven by the motor sitting in here getting driven down from above so um pretty safe to go splash it around in the mud because you've got the, the fully enclosed wheel arches and um, very nice indeed beautiful piece of molding really really nice so uh, there's your cco1 floor pan body now the body is beautiful it's uh, it's very very large um, as you can see I'm looking at it here it is it's 16 inches long so it's, uh, it's, it's fairly big it's a big old you can see my hands on it there it's a big old bird it looks like a sort of model on a TD5 or a 300 TDI um, we haven't got the early sort of the, the strips going along here but the later door handles um, but we don't have a puma bulge so i may actually make a resin puma bulge to go in there um but yeah very very nice the uh, rear door handle detail there rear light detail here as you can see and the rear door hinges are beautifully done and then you've got your cappings with your rivets which are a bit overdone but okay, they're there cappings along the side windows here it's a shame they put windows in it I'd rather do a van um, without these windows here as well but never mind there we go yeah very nice indeed and then a sort of simplified front here and then we're going to add um, add the grill and everything and leave these lights clear so I have headlights showing through and again we've got the um, the vents in there so as I say TD5 300 model along one of those and there were the indentations in the body here and the mounts here for the roll cage. So that's the body. Now the bit that all the mechanical ones amongst you want to see is this one. This bag here is where all your fun stuff is. Now as you can see there's a lot of it so we we'll go through. We've got a bag here which has got some little um, clips and everything for fitting the body. And then we've got some screws and washers double-sided tape another bag here which is full of gears for our differentials you can see we've got the um, spur gear there which is going to be driven by the motor and then you've got a differential there and then there's I'm looking for another differential here but I can't see one um, but you've got the oh, there's there's one there sorry that's that's uh, that's a drive there and there's another differential there so this is a differential here for the front so um yeah all lovely and i think they're giving you these parts here so you can lock the diff another bag of bits here this is going to be your shock absorbers this is the caps and the actual cylinders a few shock absorbers in there body mounts and these basically just come up through the body then you put a pin through them you can cut them off to whatever length you want and then we've got our rc parts bag now, if you remember at the beginning i said to you I won't open these because I don't want to go in everywhere. But you get your, your bag A, and bag A is going to do your, as it said in the instructions, step one to six. So you can put all of that aside 
and everything you need for steps one to six is in here so you've got your motor um, insulation there you've got shims for packing out the diff grease you've got your bearings there like I say I would definitely replace those um, and you've got a couple of UJs there on a shaft and then there'll be a bag of screws and you can see we've got some brass ball fittings there screws in here all in there all bagged up all lovely bag B is more of the same so we've got shafts we've got our drive couplings there for the front wheels and then the front drive shafts all in metal some of the later kits have actually replaced this with plastic so nice to see that they've stayed with metal on these so that's all very nice indeed okay we've got some phosphor bronze bushes in there by the look of it bag C you've got another differential this is going to be the rear diff now so um, it's going to be very very tough um, and we've got our drive shafts here very long screws you can see they're extremely long screws big UJ C clips got some balls and sockets there so more of these bearings that I'd replace and another phosphor bronze bush in there that's all very nice D we've got in here we've got our springs for the road wheels we've got all the rubber seals and screws and everything for our shocks and a bottle of tam da Tamiya damper oil you can get different grade oils so you can have a different level of damping if you want to there's this in there as well it's obviously an offcut from something else it's something you need um, it's been cut off another sprue so uh, not sure where that goes but it's in there bag E is again we've got more clips spacers threaded sleeves there also oh, that's nuts um, more bearings in different different color and uh, yeah more double-sided tape but look at all rubberized pads sticky pads all working very very nice no lot of nuts. and then finally our motor um, 540 isn't it? I think it's called 540 motor just a standard run-of-the-mill uh, motor for these for these models you can upgrade this with you know all sorts of things but if you're just going slow I'm not sure I'm not experienced enough but I've got a feeling the brushless motors are very much better at going extremely slow than these are these are sort of more you know on and off rather than getting you the um, you know the very very uh, the very very slow start so there we go so that's it guys that's your kit that is your Land Rover Defender 90 from Tamiya as I say I can't see a part number on the box um, but if you search Tamiya Land Rover on Amazon or whatever you will find it and as I say I paid £171 for this one and um, bargain compared to some of the others I've seen around and uh, as I say one thing to remember look for that sticker okay some will just say forward and reverse um, ESC included but look for that one that's giving you everything in the kit Thanks for watching guys, I hope you go and get one. I will build this soon and I will build it on this channel for you guys to watch. So um, if, if you are going to get yourself one, perhaps go and get one now and then you can build it with me. Bye for now.